Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between. My name is Jesse Kester, and I'd like to welcome you personally to this tutorial. Today, what we're going to be doing is taking a whole bunch of JPEGs that were shot as a panorama. We're going to stitch them together. Then we're going to slice them apart, and then we're going to post them on Instagram. Now, that's a lot of steps, so if you're not here for all of that, what I've done is down below, we've got like the little timestamps, so you can click uh, right to the part you want to go to, and you can skip all the numb nuttery that doesn't interest you at all. So what you'll see here are a whole bunch of JPEGs. I shot these with the DJI Mavic, and I shot them as a panorama, but they're still, so it's not an auto-stitch panorama. First thing I like to do is um, select all of them and open in Camera Raw. Even though these are JPEGs, we can do some editing to them. And we want to do some editing. We want to clean them up a little bit. Not sure if this is going to work. Hey, it works. Uh, I do like to remove the lens distortion. Bridge has in it heaps and heaps and heaps of different lenses, and it can automatically remove the inherent distortion. You can see at the edges, there's just the tiniest, slightest little bit, but that will help make it easier for the panorama to stitch together, because we are going to do this, the computer is going to do it, so why not make it as easy as possible? Little tiny sensor, sometimes I like to reduce the noise, maybe sharpen just a hair. Um, you know, it's looking pretty good, but I would like to boost the contrast a little bit, boost that there vibrance, get it a little bit more glowy in that respect, open it up a little bit. That's looking better. Let's bring those highlights down. We don't want to lose that sky. I don't want the sky feeling all blown out. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. We could even boost the saturation if we wanted. Hey, why not? Look at that. All right. Um, just some general light edits to the photo, nothing major. Now I'm going to click through and make sure that I haven't ruined anything with those edits, because we do go the whole, the whole circle around, which might mean the sun is somewhere that you're not seeing in the original photo, and it's really blowing out another part of the photo, but it's looking pretty good. All right, next we're going to save those images, and we are going to save them as... Bear with me as I click, clickety, click, click. We're going to save them in a folder called Graded A, because this is the A panorama that we're working with right here. Um, select, make sure they're at JPEG. Uh, resize to fit. We do not resize to fit. Quality 8 is fine. Who cares? This is from a Mavic. And we're going to end up on Instagram. So it's not, I mean, you could crank it to 10 if you wanted, but hey, I don't want. Save and let it crunch through those files. It'll take a little minute. All right, those photos have all been outputted, out, output. I don't know the past tense of output. Outed put. Those photos have all been outed put to the folder uh, graded A, and we can find them in here. Look at them; they're so beautiful. Good lord, we're off to a great start. Uh, from there, select them all, and go to Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge, and this will crack open Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop at the Photo Merge menu. I leave it at Auto. There are all your files. Whoopee. Blend images together. Yes, that would be nice. That's the whole point. We don't need to do vignette removal because we already tackled that with the, um, with the lens correction. Geometric distortion correction. I leave that on. It gives it, it, it lets it do a little bit more work as you are rotating around. Shouldn't be a huge workload on this thing because we're so far away from any of the subjects of this photo that there shouldn't be any massive geometric distortion. And I also add content aware fill transparent areas. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to be using everything that has been content aware filled, full in, content aware fill. Um, it just means we're going to have that data before we do the crop down, but we probably, probably are going to crop down on this thing. Uh, so with those all selected, click OK and go make yourself a sandwich because this takes forever. Did you enjoy your sandwich? I enjoyed mine. All right, let's take a look at what we are looking at so we can see what we're seeing. You'll see that there's an outline here, and what's going on there is basically everything inside is from actual photos, and everything outside is content-aware fill. 
Now, this is a nature scene, and it looks like it did a pretty good job, so I don't really... Eh, you know what, let's... Nah, let's, let's crop this thing. So, I generally use it as kind of a guideline of where the crop should happen, and how I crop is I pull out these uh, ruler bars. Do, 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 do. The ruler bars, do, 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 do. The ruler bars, do, 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 do. Then we deselect. Grab that rusty, trusty marquee tool, select the actual square that you want, and image crop. Cool, now we have this beautiful panorama photo, most of which, 99% of which is actual photograph, and the remaining, like, whatever, 5%, 1%. The tiny bits around the edges are content aware fill, but look. That's cool. That's okay. There are purists out there. I ain't one of them. I'm just trying to make a panorama and then slice it up for the gram. Ooh, look at that cute little truck out there. All right, focus. Stay sharp. I got to go to the shoot tonight and I can't be noodling around. So we've got our panorama. Now, the first thing you want to do is, um, you know, save it because we just did all that. We didn't do the work. The computer did all that work and we don't want to leave it hanging, do we? Graded A, we'll just leave it out here called uh, graded A dot PST. Now for the for the magic touch, what's gonna get us to uh, to Instagram safely. So we gotta slice this thing up. How do you do that, you ask? Here's how I answer. Go to your slice tool. That's how you slice. Uh, using those same guides that we built for the marquee, just drag your big old rectangle across. Now what we have is nothing happening. So what you got to do is right click and divide slice. We're going to divide vertically. And let's take a look at what 8 does. 8, that's looking pretty square. Now for the gram, you want to keep it pretty square. You can go a little bit vertical. Let's take a look at what 7 does. Or 9. 9 is a little too vertical for comfort. So the, the higher the number, the more vertical the image will be. I'm going to leave it at 8. Carousels do up to 10, I believe. So 8 is a good number. 8 slices. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Click OK. Ta-da! Your image is now sliced. That doesn't do us a lot of good if we don't have individual JPEGs. So what you're going to do is... Uh, shift command alt save which is your save for web keyboard shortcut if you don't like keyboard shortcuts you can go up to file and um, oh, can't do it because we're in this window now what it's giving you here is a preview of what one image will look like and you can uh, you know check them out individually but uh, I have faith that this is going to export correctly so we're gonna save and Good lord, Photoshop, why can't you just go to the last thingamajig that I was doing? Why do you always have to take me all over around the world? And we're going to drop that in graded A. Save. Done. Save your PSD again. And let's just double check that those files are exactly what we want. We've got our graded folder. And then in our, whoop, nope, where are we going? graded a that's what we're looking for and in our graded a folder not only do we have all the jpegs that made that up we've also got this new folder called images what is one not sure what that is and not liking it we're gonna move that to the trash but we've still got our eight slices just as we want them that might have been a little like one pixel vertical outside of our um Outside of our selection, I might have made a mistake there. No worries. We've got all these other JPEGs that once Finder loads them, I am killing all the RAM. I'm going to quit Photoshop and also Bridge. Hot damn. All right, let's see if that doesn't free it up a little bit. Do, 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 do. A little bit. Do, 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 do. Dude, Finder, you're killing me, baby. All right, so that's what a photo looks like from there. 
it was photo three, and it would go down the list as such. All right, the next trick is getting these bad boys over to Instagram. Let's get them over to Instagram. All right, here we are on Instagram, and there are two things to remember when posting them. First is you wanna start from the what seems to be the last photo. That's actually the first. Then you wanna make sure that you tap the little two arrow things in the lower left corner to make sure that you're getting all of the photo. If you allow Instagram to auto crop it, the seams won't work. So you need it to be exactly one-to-one -one what you outputted from, what you outed put from Photoshop. Next, select the multiple image tag button, toggle, whatever that is, and then go down from right to left, bottom to top to get your photos in the correct order. And then before you post them, make sure you go through and you'll see that there's like a little bit of separation between them now. That won't exist in the actual post. Um, so these are all looking good. They look like they match. And we're gonna go to next and you type in your description and then you click share. Once the file is shared, you will notice that it is absolutely seamless as you swipe through your carousel. Really love, hey, there's that little cute truck that we were looking at earlier. Really, really effective, totally works. It's a dream. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, um, you're allowed to click like, you're allowed to subscribe. What I'd appreciate even more is uh, ask whatever questions you have. I love answering questions. I love doing little techie noodly things. And I'd be only so happy to help you out. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go eat another sandwich.